Thank you very much uh, for your patience and your understanding. Um, we will have to, um, again, adjust a little bit. Uh, this presentation that I was going to give this evening, um, we'll uh, make sure that that presentation gets put on the um, uh, website uh, for both UBID as well as the CVRD. And so I'm going to have to talk a few folks, uh, uh, you know, through the slides this evening. Um, originally, um, we were going to have an introduction from uh, Trustee Ian Monroe, as well as uh, Electoral Area Director uh, Daniel Arbor, uh, but they're unfortunately uh, listening in, and hopefully they can, you know, maybe send their greetings via the live chat. But I can't see them anymore um, off of the Zoom call, so um, uh, they send their greetings. And um, there's uh, Director Arbor right there saying hello, everybody, and. Um, just like to acknowledge uh, this evening that uh, the Union Bay Improvement District is located on the unceded traditional territory of the Comox First Nation. Um, my name is Dan Wong. I'm a senior planner with Urban Systems uh, in Victoria. And uh, we've been pleased to be working with uh, the Union Bay Improvement District as well as the Comox Valley Regional District uh, on uh, the Union Bay Improvement District conversion study. Um, I will walk through uh, some of the components uh, of the study uh, talk a little bit about the background context, some of the key issues, a comparison of options and summary of observations, and then talk about the next steps. Um, there are a number of frequently asked questions um, that um, have been asked throughout the study. We, I was going to have them on the screen. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show those on the screen, but I can talk through them with folks uh, for the next hour or so. But uh, um, you know, we, we will make sure that if you have any questions, um, please put them into the live chat box on the right-hand side. If you have, um, uh, don't have the ability to type into the live chat, you can also send an email uh, this evening or, or at any time throughout the process to UBID governance, U-B-I-D governance at urbansystems.ca. And if you send that this evening, um, that will go to one of my colleagues who's standing by behind us and, um, and they'll uh, copy me uh, into the live chat, um, uh, your questions, and we'll make sure those get answered. Thank you very much, uh, Blair, for putting that on there. So that's UBIT governance at urbansystems.ca. If you have the ability, just type into the live chat um, and have any questions, uh, please do so um, throughout the evening. Um, so the schedule for the evening was, uh, again, supposed to be a welcome and introductions for myself, as well as Trustee Arbor and uh, Trustee Monroe and Director Arbor. Um, I, I was going to give about a 15 minute presentation. I will walk, I will walk you through that um, verbally and make sure that it's available again on the UBID website and the, um, the CVRD's website. Um, during the question and answer period, uh, I'll read out each question and provide appropriate responses as possible. And uh, like I say, uh, there, there's about a dozen or so frequently asked questions um, which uh, are, are posted on the UBID and CVRD's website. So as background, um, as many of you know, Union Bay is an unincorporated community of approximately 1,200 people uh, within electoral area A of the Comox Valley Regional District. UBID uh, was formed over 60 years ago to provide water, fire protection, and street lighting services to its residents. There's approximately 800 ratepayers on 690 properties within UBID. Over the years, community concerns regarding service delivery and decision-making led to interest from residents to consider other governance options, including a previous incorporation referendum, which was unsuccessful. Through further conversations uh, earlier in 2020, the province provided funding to CVRD and UBID to examine the potential conversion of UBID services to the CVRD. So this study is a joint initiative between UBID and the CVRD to review the existing governance structures administration and services that are provided by the Union Bay Improvement District, specifically water services, fire protection, and street lighting. The study seeks to address the following. Um, we compiled detailed information on how current services are being provided and funded. We examined two governance options. Option A was to convert UBIT services to CVRD services. And option B was to improve governance and service delivery in Union Bay while maintaining UBIT structure as an improvement district. Municipal incorporation uh, was not an option to be studied uh, at this time, 
uh, but could be seen by the ministry uh, as a potential stepping stone, uh, depending on the outcome uh, of this study. Finally, uh, as part of this process, uh, we're here to consider the opinions and, and, and input from local residents, as well as interests uh, within the community to assist in determining the future governance within UBID. We started this project uh, early in 2020 in February. Um, we spent a few months doing background review and stakeholder engagement. We toured a number of facilities with UBID staff, um, conducted some detailed analysis uh, of both UBID's financial information as well as the CVRD structure uh, for how it administers services. We prepared a draft report, which is an unbiased technical report of our findings uh, in September, and that is posted uh, on the UBID and CVRD's website. We're here uh, this evening um, to discuss um, our findings out of the draft report. Um, so tonight will be a virtual session. In addition, um, we are hosting uh, a series of in-person uh, sessions on Tuesday, October the 20th, which is next Tuesday. And we'll be hosting a series of 45 minute blocks uh, starting from 4 p.m. till 7.45, which you can go to the CVRD's website to register. Um, and we'll be following all health and safety protocols um, to ensure safety of all residents attending the meeting. Um, once we get feedback from the residents, um, we'll complete our final report by the end of the month for consideration by UBID and CVRD. And um, uh, the, uh, the UBID is committed to hosting, uh, holding a referendum uh, for ratepayers of UBID um, to, to decide uh, on uh, the potential for conversion. The date of the referendum is scheduled for November 28th, 2020 on a Saturday with two advanced polling options on November 10th and November 17th. So a number of key issues are related to governance service delivery and finance. With respect to governance, um, there've been um, a number of board turnovers in recent years, which has led to challenges in retaining quorum. There've been a few other challenges um, throughout the history uh, of the UBIT, um, which have led to the potential erosion of public trust, as well as participation in UBIT governance. That said, um, for any improvement district or, or local service provider, uh, there is uh, that we've noted a strong sense of place and community pride with your staff, with the community um, that's associated with owning your assets locally and providing those assets locally through UBIT. With respect to service delivery, um, there have been recent challenges um, to, to, based on the capacity of existing UBIT staff to address increasing demands due to growth and development. In addition, uh, increasing regulations and service level requirements for fire and service delivery have required uh, additional training, uh, additional costs, and additional operations for your, for your fire services and water services. And finally, um, with the recent retirement of the CAO for UBIT um, and, and other staff transitions, um, uh, this, this has, has caused an additional workload to the existing staff. Finances are a key to any uh, governance study, and it's no different uh, with respect to the UBIT conversion study. Most notably, as you all know, as an improvement district, um, uh, UBID was not able to access senior government grant funding for its most recent water treatment plant. It is up and running as of May of this year. It's an estimated capital cost of $4.2 million, and that entire amount is being funded directly and financed uh, by the ratepayers of Union Bay. As a small community moving forward, there's concern for the potential burden of infrastructure debt for both new and aging assets. That said, however, our review of UBID's finances indicate that U UBID is managing its financial responsibilities reasonably well, and you are putting aside annual transfers to capital reserves for both the water system and fire system improvement. So as part of this study, as mentioned, we looked at two options. Option A was what would it take uh, what would it look like if you flipped a switch and tomorrow uh, the services were converted from Union Bay Improvement District to the CVRD? And so our review is a technical review based on kind of a, a snapshot of before and after. Uh, we don't look at any future levels of service or any other, any other decisions that either the trustees of UBID or the regional district directors would make with respect to level of service. So we look at the services that are providing today costs that are being provided today and what those same services would, would cost 
and, and, and how they would be administered uh, under a conversion scenario. The second option would be uh, if uh, conversion did not happen and UBID maintained um, uh, it, its current governance structure, um, what, uh, what potential opportunities for improving governance and service delivery and asset management um, uh, would, would UBID undertake in the future? So looking at the governance structure, um, upon if, if conversion to the CVRD would take place, then the CVRD board uh, would then determine policies and procedures related to local services. Currently, the regional board uses the Electoral Area Services Committee, or ESC, uh, to consider policy matters for other existing local service areas. And so that would be the case as well uh, with the potential conversion for a few bit to the regional district. Option B maintains the current elected UBID Board of Trustees. They're currently uh, on a three-year term and that is staggered and elections are held every year. With respect to service delivery, um, under option A, service provisions would be converted to the CVRD through a transfer of letters patent and then the creation of three separate local service areas. There would be, a, there would be an individual service area establishing bylaw created for each individual service, water, fire protection, and um, street lighting, those assets would uh, go within those specific local service areas and be funded individually uh, based on the operating and capital costs of each of those three local services. Under option B, uh, Union Bay Improvement District would continue to provide services to the local area through its existing letters patent for those three services, water, fire protection, and street lighting. Finally, when we looked at the finances and the report, um, that's also on both websites, um, goes into uh, detail about the potential changes for finance. Um, the impacts of conversion um, in, in looking at the 2020 budget for um, UBID and in discussions with CVRD finance, the impacts are estimated to be cost neutral. Um, so um, with a potential cost savings depending on overall labor costs. Some of the cost savings including, include the, the deletion of expenditures for UBIT trustees, leasing and operation costs for the UBIT administration office, and salary and benefits for the UBIT administrator. This would be offset by additional CVRD support service costs, which are estimated at approximately 4% to 5% of total expenditures for each service category. That, that said again, water, fire protection, and street lighting. This four to 5% is consistent with what the CVRD um, uh, uh, puts for other services within the CVRD. Finally, the CVRD um, has different levels of service um, for uh, its uh, operations for water services, and it may require additional capital reserve contributions, thus potentially impacting tolls and taxes. And again, it's, it's challenging to be definitive on what that actual dollar number is, uh, again, because the before and after snapshot would indicate that, the, that it is cost neutral. But we, we note that there is a difference in the level of service um, between the two communities uh, and the two organizations. So that, that, is, a, that is a change um, that, that needs to be looked at um, uh, by the CDRD. So the report identifies a number of key summary observations. And these are also noted in newsletter number three, which is also on the website and we'll make those available to anybody who, who, who needs it. Um, I've got about uh, uh, seven or eight different observations uh, that came out from our, uh, our study. Most notably, regardless of the option chosen, the assets and liabilities that currently exist um, will remain with the local community ratepayers. Obviously, if it stays as an improvement district, those local assets stay with Union Bay Improvement District. If conversion to the regional district occurs, then those assets and liabilities would be converted to the regional district, but within that specific local service area category. So the water reserves that would go into a, a Union Bay local service area for water can't be taken out and transferred to a, say a Royston water system uh, or another water system or a different category altogether. Those assets and liabilities, all the water licenses, um, all the equipment and fleet, they all stay within the respective local service category. As noted, based on the available information and assumptions in our study, the conversion to a regional district local service area is expected to be cost neutral with a potential small cost savings depending on labor costs. 
Um, UBIT just ratified uh, its labor relations agreement, uh, I believe, yesterday. Um, so we could not plug those into our, um, our model to determine what those impacts are. Uh, we will be reviewing that as part of the final report. Conversion to a regional district local service would mean the dissolution of the UBIT Board of Trustees. However, local representation would still be obtained through your current electoral area director for area A, which is Director Arbor. Conversion to a regional district has the potential to provide access to a larger pool of expertise, namely engineering, planning, finance, and administration. It also allows for the potential access to senior government grants, as well as the potential financing through the Municipal Finance Authority. Currently, the borrowing for the uh, UBID water treatment plant is, uh, is, a, is, a, is at a short-term uh, basis. It, is not, um, it has not been locked in at this time. Um, depending on the outcome of the referendum and, and the potential decision to convert or not convert, um, the, if it does convert to the regional district, um, the regional district is committed to looking into transferring um, that uh, potential debt into uh, what's called the debenture through the Municipal Finance Authority. They generally provide uh, lower rates um, than a bank would, um, but would, uh, would, and that's why it's not locked in at this time. Conversion of the fire service would involve the provision of an annual operating grant provided by the CVRD to the Union Bay Volunteer Firefighters Association. That association would then operate a fire services contract with the regional district. And these would be things for accounting services, bookkeeping services, and, um, and remuneration of the volunteer firefighters. The Union Bay Fire Chief and the Deputy Fire Chief would become employees of the CVRD. Two more observations that we identified in our report. Um, there would be additional costs for either option including additional operation costs for the new water treatment plant. It has, it's, it's been operating for about seven months now. It was commissioned May of 2020, so they have not had a full year of operations. Uh, we've been working with UBID staff to determine what the potential annual operating costs would be to plug into next year's budget in 2021. Those costs would be an increase um, whether or not um, you stayed as Union Bay Improvement District or converted to the regional district. Uh, those annual operating costs will go up next year in 2021. Also, th there would be additional labor costs, as I mentioned, due to the new union collective agreement, which was ratified just recently. Finally, um, we have recommended that costs for water main replacement could increase under the conversion option, uh, again, due to the CVRD's higher level of service standards for water main repair. But in our option, uh, for either option, we have made a recommendation to utilize uh, good best practices for asset management. And those best practices should be, uh, should be incorporated into both organizations, um, whether or not conversion happens or not, in order to support sustainable service delivery. Um, now that the water treatment plant is up and running, well, we know that the next um, um, priority for uh, UBID water staff is to really look at the aging water mains. You have uh, quite a number of aging AC water mains which are causing numerous breaks, um, which, um, which, which should be addressed. And so UBIT is, has a plan to, to address those. Those would also then be transferred into the CVRD for proper asset management. So how does the community get involved? Um, it will be through sessions like tonight. Uh, please uh, ask any questions um, through the live chat, or you can send an email to ubitgovernance at urbansystems.ca. There will be uh, an additional in-person meeting uh, on Tuesday, as I mentioned, um, from four till 7.45. You can go on the CVRD's website to uh, sign in and register. And at the end of the day, the community will have their say. There will be a referendum, as mentioned, scheduled for Saturday, November 28th, with advanced polling on November the 10th and November the 17th. Unfortunately, there will be no option for mail-in voting. The referendum question is as follows. Are you in favor of dissolving the Union Bay Improvement District and converting to Comox Valley Regional District local service areas? So the answer would be a simple yes or no. The eligible voter requirements are as per 
uh, Union Bay Improvement District's uh, policies for voting. Those policies um, require voters to be property owners within the boundaries of the Union Bay Improvement District or a spouse of a landowner who has a substantial interest or right to possession of the land. Other voter requirements, um, such as being a Canadian citizen, a BC resident for six months and so forth, are also applicable uh, for you to vote in the referendum. We'll have more details on the website as the date gets closer and we'll also be able to provide this information at the upcoming in-person meeting. My apologies again for the technical difficulties. Um, ideally, you would have seen this presentation on the screen uh, as I was speaking through it. Um, we will make this presentation available to, um, uh, to those on both websites and also have the frequently asked questions as well too. So at this point, I uh, will stop there and I will uh, have a look to see if there's any specific questions that are uh, posted on the live chat. And uh, like I said, alternatively, you can email your questions uh, to ubitgovernance at urbansystems.ca and my colleagues will then forward them to me uh, in the sidebar and I will read out any questions. So I see Trustee Monroe had identified a number of, uh, you know, welcomed everybody, um, said this is an opportunity for you to hear more about the study and indicated that the board is committed to making sure that you have access to the information you need to make an informed vote in the referendum. Question from Dave Gottfried, has the CVRD given any indication of what will happen with the existing UBIT staff if conversion takes place? Um, so our model has, uh, so, so uh, we have met uh, with CVRD and UBID staff to identify um, uh, the, the, the roles that each are playing, both in the water system and um, within administration. Um, uh, CVRD is currently evaluating um, the roles that they would play. Um, on the water side, uh, the, the water system operates um, pretty much as a standalone system. Um, and therefore requires operators for that. And so the, the CVRD uh, is reviewing the, the, you know, the option and the opportunity to keep the staff um, uh, you know, within the CVRD. Uh, as you know, this, the CAO recently retired, so that position right now is, is vacant. And if uh, conversion to the CVRD took place, that uh, uh, there would no longer be a need for um, UBID uh, administrator. And then uh, with respect to administration and finance staff, Again, CVRD is reviewing, um, has reviewed um, their, uh, their positions and how they would potentially fit within the CVRD organization. And then finally, with respect to fire services, um, as mentioned, the fire chief and deputy fire chief uh, would become employees of the, the regional district. And uh, they would uh, then enter into an operating agreement uh, with the Union Bay Volunteer Firefighters Association and provide an annual grant uh, to administer the administration, bookkeeping, and um, a remuneration for volunteer firefighters. The second question is, uh, we'll make, and we'll make sure that these questions get posted and then we'll provide those answers as well too um, uh, uh, for those posting those questions. Um, the second question, could grant funds be available for future infrastructure costs? And so uh, with conversion to the uh, regional district, um, regional districts and uh, have the ability to apply for senior government grants, provincial and federal, uh, by policy improvement districts uh, since about the 80s have not had that opportunity. So, so yes, that is one of the financial considerations uh, moving forward um, that uh, the regional district um, could apply uh, for senior government grants for uh, future infrastructure within uh, Union Bay Improvement District. Um, they would have to balance that with, um, you know, the priorities in the rest of the CVRD, um, but, but certainly um, that, that is an opportunity uh, in front of the regional district. Uh, the next question is, what are the parameters for the referendum? Is it simply a 51% plus majority? 
Um, that is a very good question. Um, my assumption, and uh, again, we'll, I'll definitely get back to you on that. My assumption would be that it would be a simple 51% majority. Uh, it is the minister's decision at the end of the day. Um, so, but the referendum obviously uh, provides strong guidance to the minister uh, to make her decision um, uh, whether or not conversion happens. Uh, but at this stage, the referendum, my understanding, uh, unless I'm hearing otherwise from, from, from Janice, who is also uh, in the background, um, that it would be a 51% uh, plus majority for the referendum. Uh, the next question, uh, can you please speak a bit about the recommendation that would be made to improve UBIT's current governance should option B be preferred? Um, good question. Thank you very much. Um, so what we had identified was um, there are some of the challenges as we went through this uh, study was um, that um, some of the information, um, there were a few gaps in the information, the um, the mapping that was provided, um, there was there 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 was some some information that uh, didn't quite jive with the GIS information that we've created, and so what we're recommending on either option, but 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 specifically of option B be preferred, was to improve um, the inventory of assets that 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 the, that UBIT has um, to. Uh, basically make sure that you have the right inventory, um, you know how long it lasts, the condition assessment, and the actual value of replacement costs. And so then you're able to fully fund that infrastructures uh, for better management of the water system. Um, with respect to um, uh, other services, street lighting, there's not much really to change as far as street lighting goes. Uh, all of the street lights uh, currently um, are on hydro poles. Essentially, you get a bill from hydro that gets funded um, through the tolls and paid, paid that way. So, so there's really no changes in the governance um, of, of street lighting. With respect to fire, um, the, the, new, uh, the new fire chief was recently uh, installed. And my understanding is that there's a, there's a good group of volunteers as well too. Um, the building itself um, is, uh, as you know, showing its age uh, as well as, as, well as the, um, the apparatus as well too. So you have set aside uh, some monies for replacement of that infrastructure. Um, and, and there also is the, uh, in the works, the potential to um, uh, relocate uh, the fire hall uh, on, a, on a piece of land dedicated uh, under the, the Union Bay Estates development. Um, with respect to decision-making, um, really then it just comes down to, um, you, know, in, you know, ensuring that um, uh, you, that, that, that the trustees uh, govern transparently, um, be accountable to its citizens, um, uh, encourage people to, to take part and participate in, um, in, in uh, the discussion and ensure that uh, over the long term that there's interest in trustees as well too, um, so that there's good, um, a good representation of the community from, from, from the trustees. So um, at this point, that's, uh, I'll, I'll stop there. And um, if anybody else has any questions, we can, we can further explore that uh, either later tonight or, or next week. So James Warren uh, just signed in. His, uh, he's the Deputy Chief Administrative Officer from the CVRD and he states that Regarding the existing UBID staff, the conversion will transfer all existing staff from UBID to CVRD, and those staff would be assigned to the union-based services. So it would be premature to determine with absolute certainty any long-term outcomes. However, we understand the importance of fiscal responsibility and will want to find the right balance for service delivery. With no more questions coming in, um, a couple of frequently asked questions. Um, uh, who funded the study? Uh, the study was funded um, by, uh, to the, um, uh, by the Provincial Ministry of Municipal Affairs um, for the base uh, analysis uh, for this report. During the project, some additional funding was provided by the ministry to undertake a high level infrastructure assessment of the water system. 
And so that's where we were able to do a bit more mapping, identify the existing pipes, the agent condition. Um, that is the first step, as, as we mentioned, in a, in a longer term asset management plan. But it, uh, it gave us a good start to at least uh, create a, a better inventory and replacement cost of the system. Uh, as part of this study, um, there was an advisory working group. And um, uh, one of the questions was, you know, how were UBIT and CBRD staff and elected officials involved in the study? So as the, as the consultant, we worked closely with both UBID staff and CBRD staff to obtain background information, conduct site tours, field investigations, and analyze the data to assess financial and other impacts. Throughout the study, there was an advisory working group comprised of staff and elected officials from both UBID and CBRD, as well as ministry staff. And we met monthly to review uh, progress to date and they provided support and guidance to the consulting team. So I just wanna take this time to thank um, staff and elected officials from both UBID and CVRD um, for your contributions and to the ministry staff uh, for being on the advisory working group um, through this very busy time. Uh, the next question on the chat was, if the conversion to CVRD takes place, would it be possible to later convert to a municipality in the future long-term once Union Bay grows? Um, the answer to that, and the ministry also provided that comment, was, um, was uh, yes, there is the potential. Um, this, uh, the ministry funded this um, uh, exercise um, with only funding the, 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 the option at this time to, to consider conversion, but potentially this could be a stepping stone at some point in the future. So the... That is a frequently asked question. And um, another portion of that um, would, uh, that's related to that is what happens to all the assets of UBID? And all capital assets as mentioned and land owned by UBID would transfer to the CVRD for the purposes of that service as mentioned, water, fire, and street lighting. The Langley, the Langley Lake Dam and associated water licenses would also transfer to the CVRD for the purpose of providing water services to the residents and ratepayers of Union Bay within that local service. In addition, all liabilities would transfer to the CVRD, including long-term debt on the water treatment plant. And then a follow-up to that uh, in the FAQs, in the event that Union Bay incorporates at, into the, at some future date, Will the Langley Lake water licenses be returned to Union Bay? And if the community of Union Bay were to incorporate as a municipality at some future date, all local services along with the related assets and liabilities would similarly be transferred from the regional district to the new municipality. This would include water licenses used to draw water supply and any water licenses and capital reserve funds that were accounted for in the capital plans for that water service. So yes, at some point in the, in the future, if municipal incorporation were to be studied um, and, and take place, then the, um, um, you know, those assets uh, that potentially were transferred to the regional district would be transferred to the municipality. Um, the follow-up question from Lindsay Clement was, if possible, what is the likelihood of this? Um, We've done a number of incorporation studies uh, in the past. We worked on Salt Spring Island um, and, uh, and a few others. It, it, I guess the short answer, it, it depends. It really depends on the level of service that the residents feel that they're getting, um, you know, the amount that they're paying for those services, and then the governance and the decision-making the, the decision that's being made. Um, you know, some communities get to a point, like I said, in Salt Spring Island at about 11,000 people where you know, some people in the community felt that, you know, it, we, we would be better off uh, as our own municipality to make our own decisions locally with the mayor and council. And so we were involved in an incorporation study there and, and, and assessed, um, you know, that the services, um, uh, Salt Spring Island is, is extra unique in that they have the island's trust. But the biggest issue um, with incorporation from a regional district or an, from an unincorporated area to an incorporated area is immediately upon incorporation as a municipality, 
whatever size, be you 500 people or 500,000 people, um, you become responsible for all roads within the municipality, as well as a portion of policing, depending on the size of your municipality. Um, so less than 5,000 population pays a certain percentage to policing. Between 5,000 and 15,000, you pay another percentage. And then 15,000 and over, you pay uh, more. So it's uh, uh, between five and 15,000 is 70%. 15,000 and above is, is 90%. So those two costs, roads and policing, generally are the ones that um, would be the largest financial hit to any new municipality. And so um, really then the, the community then decides um, what would be the financial impact and what, what is the service impact and the governance impact. So, so um, that's a long answer to a short question, um, but yes, the, there is the possible possibility at some point in the future uh, if the community decides and, and the ministry um, considers that. Uh, no other questions at this time. Um, a couple of other frequently asked questions. Um, as I mentioned, what will happen with the borrowing for the water treatment plant? As I noted, uh, currently UBID's borrowing uh, is on a short-term basis and is not locked in. And it's, or, um, it's, not, it's, it's being kept not locked in at this time, uh, depending on the outcome uh, of this study. If conversion were to occur, then the CVRD would, would work with the Municipal Finance Authority uh, for any long-term borrowing options. And hopefully if it did um, uh, um, get accepted as a long-term debenture, um, then they generally, as I mentioned, provide lower rates uh, than uh, the banks would normally charge. I've gone through most of the FAQs. I'm just going through them. Um, there was a comment from um, uh, Director Arbor, Electoral Area Director, um, stating that uh, his main message is that we will all be there on Tuesday and um, we'll be happy to have conversations with those um, uh, who show up uh, at the event on Tuesday. And so the event on Tuesday um, starts at four o'clock. We will be running five concurrent sessions uh, in 45 minute blocks from four o'clock to 445, 445 to 530. 5.30 to 6.15, 6.15 to 7, and 7 o'clock to 7.45. We ask that everybody who is interested and able um, to come to the session uh, to please go to the CVRD's website, uh, pre-register um, for the event, just so that we're, we, we know um, how many people are coming to each block. Um, we are capping each block at 20 people uh, per 45-minute session. Uh, the 45 minutes gives us um, five minutes to get everybody in, um, about a half an hour to, 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 to do the presentation and have Q&A, and then five to 10 minutes um, to change over and sanitize as well. We'll be following all health protocols. Um, uh, we'll have masks available. Um, there will be handouts only. There won't be any boards. Um, there'll be three tables set up at the front of the, uh, of the um, Union Bay Community Hall, one for myself, uh, and urban systems with the, with the, with the projector. Um, one table to my left, which will be Union Bay Improvement District, will be Trustee Monroe and, and um, um, Janice Swanson. And on the other side will be CVRD um, area director, uh, as well as staff. Other trustees will be in attendance as well as other staff. And that's why we're trying to keep um, uh, the public attendance at each session down to 20. And so hopefully that will be enough opportunity um, uh, for, for those that have any additional questions, um, you can please, uh, if you have any questions after this meeting, or if you've gone to the website, um, you can 
still email those questions into hubridgovernance at urbansystems.ca. Uh, we will respond um, accordingly. Um, we know that not everybody um, uh, may not feel comfortable coming out to the, to the in-person session on Tuesday, um, but we've, we've, we've uh, been working uh, very closely with CVRD and, and UBID um, to create a health plan that meets all health and safety protocols um, from the provincial health officer. So, so we look forward to having um, a few people come out on Tuesday. And, uh, and like I say, we'll be, we'll be there to provide um, uh, a, a presentation um, as well as uh, answer questions. A few more questions have started coming in. Thanks very much. Um, uh, one from Dave saying, some say that Union Bay isn't large enough to be a municipality, yet Belcara was on the news last evening, uh, which has a population of 650 residents. Is there a number for change? Um, I guess the short answer is no, there is not. Um, uh, like I say, the largest expenditures of any municipality uh, immediately become roads and policing. And so you'd have to look at your community to determine, you know, how many kilometers of local roads do you have? What would it actually take to operate that? And then policing is a percentage um, uh, for any community that's under 5,000 in population. And then there would be the other costs associated with um, establishing a mayor and council, um, uh, any staff that's required. Um, you, you need a corporate officer as well as a finance um, um, person. And so you'd have to look at that. And then it really depends on your, your tax base. Um, so some communities may be 650 people, but they may have a large industrial taxpayer um, in their community. Others might be you know 98% residential. And so you really have to look at your tax base as well as the costs, as well as the services that are provided in governance um, to, 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 really, to, to really determine that. So, so that was, a, again, another long answer to, to a question uh, about municipal incorporation um, that it really depends on the situation. Um, the next question, if we were to go with option A, would sewer be more likely to happen versus a different option? Um, I would say not necessarily, uh, because you, you still are part of the regional district. Uh, right now, UBID does not offer sewer services within their letters patent. And so it would be something that you would be um, looking to the regional district um, for. It, you know, it, it, the challenges with sewer is just the distance from, you know, from, from the mains, as well as treatment options. And so um, I don't think you know, either way at this point, um, um, UBID or um, CVRD conversion would necessarily impact the likelihood of sewer at this point. Will there be anything different presented at the sessions versus what was presented tonight? Um, other than some in-depth, uh, more in-depth questions, Dave, not really. Um, uh, we, like I say, we wanted to provide multiple opportunities for the community to either attend here virtually or attend in person. So those people who couldn't make it tonight, we give them the option on Tuesday to attend as well too. So I'll be giving a similar presentation on Tuesday. We'll be relaying some of the uh, Q and A's that, that came up this evening, but um, um, this just, it just gives a, a greater opportunity for, for those either who weren't available tonight or who wanted a bit more information um, and who want a bit more in-person conversation um, to be able to, 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 to attend those sessions. Uh, a response uh, from uh, James Warren from the CVRD. We recently gained the rights to connect into the Courtney Comox municipal system. Whether UBID stays or comes into the regional district will have little impact on that work. So that was the answer. So that was the answer with respect to sewage. Uh, Trustee Monroe, on the topic of uh, water treatment plant financing, the UBID board has approved in principle converting the construction loan to a two year fixed loan as a cost management measure. And then um, a comment from Dave, Res residents should know that the ministry had not $1.3 million available for the conversion or for the, conver the conversion to municipality. This may still be offered if the residents decide to change in the future. It's okay, Dave. <laughs> I'm assuming you said the residents should know that the ministry had, I'm assuming, set aside or allocated $1.3 million available for 
conversion to the municipality. Um, that um, that would be a, a, a case by case basis. Um, so you said, yes, you're, you're suggesting it still may be offered. Um, that would have to be determined at the time. Um, ministerial offers are, are done on a case by case basis, depending on the situation, the financial considerations and the, the, the issues of the day. So if at some point in the future, um, municipal incorporation is looked at, then, um, then uh, the ministry would have to look at it and determine um, what an offer of restructure assistance might look like. He says that my time ran out on the live feed. Oh, Blair says I'm still live. So. so I'll I'll give it just two more minutes. So I'll I'll, I'll stop at eight fifteen unless there's any other questions. I'll I'll wait for the last few minutes um, for any other questions. Um, if uh, Trustee Monroe or Director Arbor would like to um, type in a closing uh, comment, I'd be happy to read that out for them. Uh, if any of the CVRD staff or UBID staff have any comments, um, uh, please type those also into the chat and I'll make sure I read them out um, to those on the live stream. But um, if there's no more questions coming in, um, please um, visit the UBID website and the CVRD website for more information. Uh, if you have any questions, um, please send them to ubidgovernance at urbansystems.ca. Um, if you would like uh, to attend um, the in-person sessions, Next Tuesday, again, they start at four o'clock and they run 45 minute sessions until 745. Um, you would need to pre-register on the CVRD's website. And um, we look forward to um, hearing more from the community on this important um, initiative. And um, you will have your say um, in November as part of the referendum. So thank you very much uh, from Trustee Monroe he says, thank you all for your interest and questions. Please continue to provide your feedback and questions. The process is designed to incorporate all feedback into the final report. And above all, please plan to vote in the referendum. And Director Arbor, thanks all. Maybe see you on Tuesday. Um, his number is uh, listed on the screen there, 250-650-8480, or email him at reachme at danielarbor.ca for any questions. You don't want to ask either staff or urban systems. Uh, good job, Dan. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we did have to juggle a little bit here. Uh, thank you for your patience again, everybody. We really appreciate um, you taking the time uh, this evening um, to join in the live stream. Uh, apologies again for the delay and not having the presentation. But again, we'll make sure that that presentation is available um, on online. And we hope to see some of you next Tuesday. And, um, and uh, please, um, uh, you know, that this, this study is for, for you as residents and, and ratepayers of, of UBIT to determine your future. So um, hopefully you have the information um, that you need to make an informed decision and um, uh, let us know if you have any questions through all of those contacts. So, so with that, um, thank you very much and uh, have a great evening, everybody.